Oh, we're going. We are going. We are, going. Oh. We are a go ahead. Um, you good? You good? Everything mm. good? Mm. Mm. Yeah? yeah? I'm ready. I'm ready. You ready? My mind is ready. My body is ready. I don't think my, I'm ready. Uh, my body definitely ain't ready. Why? I don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to do the clap I'll do the clap board. Thank you. Hello, and welcome back to the Cinema Rules Podcast, episode three, Sean. Episode three, we're very uh, we're closing in on the milestone of five episodes uploaded to Buzzsprout, but then seven episodes until this is a permanent thing, I yeah. guess. Yeah, uh, seven. And they say seven, seven is a magic number, and then you carry on doing it. But I feel like we've been doing it for ages already. Well, we've been doing it for three to four years. <laughs> this, I guess, it's just a prolonged. It's just uh, a different different way of doing it. Yeah, I oh, guess, ma'am. We've had a busy we've film had, watching week. We've had a busy week. Yeah, we've gone to the cinema. Two times. Have we been any more? No. I didn't know I'm thinking of potentially going this weekend to watch Maxine. Oh man, I can't wait to see it. I didn't. I thought we put it in our diary as coming out in August. Yeah, maybe it's got an early early release. In some films are released earlier in the UK than in America. Mm. So um, maybe it's one of those. Yeah, we we'll um, get on that then. But we, both times we went to cinema this week, we saw the trailer, and it does look really cool. It does look good. It, it's the same vibe as uh, obviously yeah. X and it's Pearl. And didn't you say your brother said it's the same character from X? Yeah, he mentioned that. Um, it, it's it's just a progression of the same of the same character, and I I disagreed with him. I but don't then know. he kind of turned me to think. Or to I think it, it might be because I think X is set in the seventies, and this is the eighties. Pearl was set in like. Really early, nineteen thirty. Was, yeah, was 19, X in the modern? It was like nineteen forties because it was the, during the war, I think. Was X in the modern day? I can't remember. It's been ages. No, since X wasn't it, in the modern day. It was definitely within the seventies because yeah. it was uh, it was surrounded like the seventies porn era. Yeah, and this is the eighties. So it, it chronologically it could be the same girl, but she looks completely different and sounds completely. Yeah, different. but it could be like if it's in the eighties, then it could be like ten years later. I guess, but and she's in reinvented yeah. herself, and she's, I, because it, her character in yeah. Maxine is going from a porn actress, which she was in X, yeah, exactly, to, yeah. A, to a Hollywood actress. Hollywood so actress. And there's some kind of murder going on at the same time, and and who is it that's in it? Kevin Bacon, is it Kevin Bacon mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. of Friday the Thirteenth fame? Yeah, and I forgot fame. about that. Ty West is great, so I'm hoping he. I'm hoping he makes a good film. I am excited to see what he does outside of this anthology series, though. Like when he moves on to another, like a fourth film that isn't necessarily. What has he done before this trilogy? I don't though? know. Let me have a quick look. Because um, he's definitely been around for a while. But for me, um, X was okay. You know, Pearl was brilliant. I love yeah, Pearl. So hopefully he's improving even more. Even more. Um, just TV stuff, TV series. Yeah. The, the, the Exorcist TV series, which I yeah. didn't know existed. Um, Wayward Pines, Scream the TV series. He's done a bit of that. That was quite good. I didn't mind that. Has he not done any oh, movies? Oh, VHS. He did VHS. I'm VHS. pretty sure he's done some others. Cabin Fever 2, The House of the Devil, The Roost. So he's done a few kind of more B movie. Oh, I uh, thought he did some some horrors. big movies. I thought Ty West did some big movies because no. he, he just I just recognise his name. No, he was one of those ones that we lumped in with uh, kind of the up and coming new wave of horror directors like right, okay, um, Fede, Fede Alvarez. And we, by the way, Fede Alvarez, we saw the trailer for Alien Romulus at the cinema, the second which trailer. I hadn't seen. Yeah, and I thought it was sick. it yeah. looks great. It, it does looks look great. really good. There's a lot of practical, like you you see the alien at the end for a moment, and it's, it's, it's practical. But it effects. looks proper science fiction as well, though not just not just a slasher in space, but it looks like there's some science fiction elements to yeah. it as well. Yeah, it looks hardcore. Yeah, I'm excited for that. But um, Maxine, yeah, I'm I'm down to go see it. Yeah, um, it's uh, been released today, and I. I I did really enjoy Pearl. I thought it was brilliant, but I think it hinged a lot on uh, Mia Goth's performance. But that's what you want in any film. No, hundred percent. But I think I think um, I I don't think it was great down to the story. Yeah, yeah. I think the style was cool. Yeah. Um, and you you not you get not getting that in in Maxine. So I'm I'm keeping my my a level head going into Maxine. I think mm. it will be um I think it will be good, but I don't think it will be as good as Pearl. Speaking of style mm. and stylistic films, we went 
to see one of the films we went to see this week was a secret screening. Mm. We knew it was going to be a horror film that was an 18, but we had no idea what it was. We thought it was going to be an old film. I thought it was going to be an old film, yeah. And then I was thinking, oh, maybe it's like Terrifier because Terrifier 3 is coming out or, or something like that. Yeah, we thought it was going to... I was like guessing Nightmare on Elm Street. You were saying Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the original. Yeah, yeah, because um, it was a short... And we, then, knew, we knew it was going to be like an hour and a half long. And then popped out onto the screen, the title was in... A na- uh, in a uh, in a violence of nature in a violent in a nature. Ni- in a violent nature in a violent nature and straight away I'm like I've heard of that film yeah I, like, we I both that, of I know us that looked at you and we were like is like, that an old film yeah, is that a I, new I, film I, I thought oh that's a I've definitely heard of that that's a new film and then we were we kind of clicked the first shot of the first shot when yeah the first shot we clicked that it was a new slasher film that was from the point of view of the actual killer, the yeah. slasher. Mm-hmm. But imagine Friday the 13th, basically. But, the but you see it from reversed. Jason Voorhees' perspective. The, flip, the script is flipped. And when I, when I realised it was that film, I was like, oh, damn. Really? Why? Yeah, because I wanted to see it, but I also was like, is this... How is it going to work? I was really... I was intrigued to see but, how it was going to work. But why, why, why such a downer on the, I on just, the reaction? I... I I imagined, I, I, I thought it was going to be a gimmick. Like, yeah. I thought the whole thing but was But if you were intrigued about how they were going to yeah, do it, why know. are you like, ah? Oh. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> well, maybe it, well, it, wasn't that, it wasn't that bad, but I was, I don't know. I, was, I, was, I wanted an old film as well, I guess. Yeah. But um, you wanted Chris, Maxine. That's what you Yeah, wanted, I, I, I did. I really wanted it to be Maxine, but then the trailer for Maxine came up. And I was like, <laughs> Shh, damn it. Um, but question number one. Because mm. I, I know you put your review out and I, I, watched, did. I, I did watch a bit of your review, but then I turned it off because your voice gets on my nerves. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I was like, first question, was it a gimmick? Did it work? Um, the, uh, the idea that you're following the perspective of the killer. Well, in my review, I said that I think it was a gimmick, but it shouldn't. that shouldn't be taken so seriously. The, the critique of it being a gimmick shouldn't carry the weight of of when you usually use that word yeah, as a critique because okay. i thought i thought it was a gimmick but it's a, it's a gimmick everyone wants to see i guess it's like Pan you out. wouldn't you wouldn't call the one shot style in 1917 a gimmick would you some people would though yeah some people would but th- but not to its detriment yeah yeah, yeah but you know yeah, so it is a gimmick it's a but it's a deliberate choice and i will yeah. say the thing about it is it because you spend so much time with the character? We were making jokes, weren't we? Like, there's a lot of walking in the film. Because slashers do, don't they? Imagine Michael Myers, like how slow he is <laughs> and how much he walks. He's just following him. But the shots and like the scenery and the stagecraft in that sense, it's really aesthetically beautiful. Mm. Really aesthetically beautiful. Yeah, definitely. Um, so I liked it in that sense. I thought like scenically it was it was really nice and well shot so there's nothing wrong with spending more time looking at something beautiful is there question go on did you find it boring yeah okay parts of it yeah a lot a lot of the comments yeah. on the on the on the movie review are saying this is uh, in a boring nature in the nature of boring <laughs> yeah, i did i did um but I, like i say though it was still beautiful and it didn't take me out of it but the problem that 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 the film has is that there is no character development. No. I mean, you do get a kind of backstory about the slasher or killer, but it's it's exposition dumped at the start. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it's like ugh, you, you you go back to the walking and you don't you don't see the because I mean I did absolutely really despise the group of kind of teenage kids in this film and I thought they were really annoying they, they, and there's no no spoilers to say that they all get murdered brutally murdered but um I thought the final girl I spoilers I thought the final girl was um a good actress at the end though I didn't she she played it quite well in the car I don't think she did and and also the the woman uh talking, we agree to disagree so. I don't think the I don't think the performances were a strength at all no I don't I'm not saying it's a strength no. definitely not I think but I, think I thought she, she held she, her own she had a lot of when she had dialogue scenes, her acting was really poor. I can't and remember she, her speaking. She had, she had this, when, in the car when she had that kind of vacant expression at the end and she was mm. so bru- shocked at the brutality and everything. Um, I guess she had a bit of, face, uh, she had expressions mm. that, were, that were okay. Yeah. But 
I didn't buy anything that any of the characters did. And that's even for a slasher Hang because I know they're meant to be... Hang like, on a minute. I meant to, and it does lean into the comedic as well. They didn't do anything stupid though, which is what normal, normal slasher camp, camp goers do. They didn't do anything stupid. They didn't react though. They didn't react. Sometimes like a, a character would see another character get brutally massacred in front of the face and they wouldn't even yeah, scream they, or yell or but anything. You're, you're talking about the, 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 that final kill in the dark where she's just staring at at him no I, I get that one i'm on about she's shocked yeah it's, you, you know you talk just because if you saw, saw someone getting brutally murdered in front of you you're not going to be screaming <laughs> i can tell you that for a fact you'll I just would. be like you would you would what you think you'll be like ah! not that but you would be making volume and noise you'd be like would you yeah if it's someone you love i'd, I'd be screaming and blooming terror and going over there and i i don't think i i don't think you would i think you will go into yourself. Well, when you and you, you'll you'll be you'll be closed off immediately. I think you'll be shocked. <laughs> maybe and I think you'll just maybe. Run. I think you'd have that reaction afterwards. I think you would have that 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 shock and stillness yeah, afterwards. Yeah. But um, that's not to say I didn't enjoy parts of the film. Mm. I really did enjoy some parts of the film. Like I lo- I like the the like I say the the camera movement, uh, the camera, the setting, the aesthetics of it. And actually, at the end of the film when it narratively does switch perspectives, it's not the performance that I think is well-crafted. It's the tension in the scene. Like, I actually yeah. had to, like, move back and, like, lay back in my seat. Like, I was my on a roller coaster ready to... Cause, because my heart was racing. And yeah. I thought... I thought... Um, <laughs> why did... And I thought... The only thing I could think of was, why didn't I feel any of this throughout the entirety of the rest of the Do film? you think that was intentional? Do you think that they, think, they waited... I think the build-up helps i think it really helps yeah but if you did that sporadically throughout yeah i think it would have been much more impactful okay i see yeah yeah um so the another bit i did like yeah was early on in the film not early, but probably about a third of the way into it there was an absolute brutal brutal scene wasn't well, there now people in the comments uh, suggested that it was like cartoonish and they were like oh this is look, looks a bit silly but I don't I didn't think I so think, I loved I think it there were some bits like the spoiler where a guy gets his head cut off early on mm. and when he's carrying the head around and throws it like it's but clearly it's a clearly dummy. a dummy but, but I don't like I, but, I mind but that. it's I the same that, sort sorry. of violence as Terrifier 2 where it's so outrageous and outlandish that like it's bordering on the comical so I but do, it's still I do, entertaining. So I do see, I understand the com, the cartoonish comment, but it was still horrifying. Yeah. Like people actually got up and, and left. Left. Yeah. Because it was that grim for them. I mean, there like were, there the, were, there were <laughs> go on, go on. There, I mean, there were people that left during murder scenes and I thought they were just a bunch of pussies. Um, but there were also people, a couple of people that left just out of boredom as well. There were some people that left when the film started because it wasn't the one they obviously wanted to see or whatever. Which, which I, I don't get. get. I, I don't well, get. It's, I a don't new fi- it's a new oh, film. Well, yeah, Why maybe, if they know, maybe if they know about it, maybe, maybe if they've seen it or, or something like that. Mm. Maybe they were hoping for an old film. Mm. But the people that were leaving during the, the kill scenes, I, I think it probably wasn't their bag, was it? It's like... You know everybody. If I put Terrifier 2 on for my parents, they would walk <laughs> out of the room but, 100%. But if they've chosen to be there knowing that it's going to be a horror and it's going to be an 80... I've never walked out of the cinema. Have you walked out of the cinema? Uh, maybe once. I was I really remember. close to for the first Twilight film. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I was really close because I, I thought mean, it was going to yeah. be like this badass vampire 30 days a night style carnage <laughs> like vampires <laughs> killing each other thing. And I was so bored in that film, man. <laughs> um, but I'm guessing I, you didn't read the, I, the, the book. I, 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 also, I also think it's like, I would never dream of going to the theatre and walking out. Like, no. I feel like if you've paid for an experience, there's a level of kind of, I don't know, of respect for the craft where you have to see it out. Like, you have to see it out to see whether or not it's... Especially, especially when, I mean, it's the title screen. They yeah. don't know what film it is. It's a new film you've paid for it why not remember? stay why not stay yeah do you remember there was an old film there was a sci-fi film called skyline do you remember that oh a b movie yeah you hated it at first and i I, I, I said it's a b movie it's supposed to be mediocre yeah, it has the, I, it has turk out of scrubs in it <laughs> I, I was too young to understand the concept of a b movie i think mm. uh, at that point uh, no budget, i think yeah. you have to embrace b movies don't you and that's what this is that's what in a violent nature is I keep going to call it yeah. violent night 
<laughs> well, that's that know. Christmas film. Oh my it? god, yeah. that film. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I I do like this new wave of B movie horror, and this is about practicing a craft. I think more than creating a important narrative story or I th- I think um movie lovers and those that are interested in the craft of 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 movies will appreciate this movie more than your average yeah. day viewers. I don't think it'll become a cult classic either. Oh no, definitely not. If anything, I don't even think I'll rewatch it nah, nah. because if if they cut out most of the walking, I think I'd love to watch it with my friends. I want to see this film from the the perspective of the actual camp <laughs> I, know, like, I know it sounds stupid because that's what the film is but i just want to see the film yeah but I, i've already seen that film it's friday the, friday the 13th, 13th. Yeah, it's a complete exactly. absolute ripoff for, right? for, i know it's meant yeah. to be paying homage yeah but it is just friday the 13th Basically. from yeah from with the, it's just a not as good friday the 13th yeah no i agree um i thought though and yes I, the, cl- the 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 um the hook death through the torso was insanely brutal but for me it was the para- uh, paralysis murder that was just sickening yeah when i think about it, it was, it's just absolutely it horrific was, it was sickening it was sickening and it was almost that was almost like a terrifier style of yeah they prolonged that yeah, as well it, it yeah. took them a while to get it's to like that torture point. porn they call it don't they yeah it was it was it was that <laughs> And and they just they took their time with it and they just let you let you marinated marinate in the the thought of what's about to happen just like the victim and it and I think it did it, it, it was really effective I thought but. oh man I when actually when I earlier on I said it's this is a film for the director to like hone their craft or to practice or to just have fun making a movie and trying lots of different things there was one s- scene that was shot I thought so bizarrely. What was it? To the point of like, we get it. Like, and I didn't think it was good at all. I think it would have been good in the first few seconds. But they're around the fire, and this I don't like it because oh, it's yeah. a massive exposition dump of what happened to this the f- killer. Uh, killer, and I don't think the actors were that good in talent. It no, nope. um, you really get a sense of their character or whatever. But the camera rotates around the fireplace behind the people that are sitting at the fireplace. Um, so you're seeing their faces. It's like a circular the pan firelight, shot. Yeah. The firelight, the darkness, the shadow all going on them and that you're seeing their like shock or enjoyment or, or horror or whatever. And at first I was like, oh yeah, this is quite cool. But it just went on it and on. It just kept doing it. It went on and on and it went to the camera rotation or the camera yeah, rotation was too fast. Yeah. And I was just like, I got motion sickness from watching <laughs> it. <laughs> it needed a ki- cut to like a still shot of a, of a character's face or something. But yeah, I, I, I get I get what you're saying. It was... Yeah. It, that was um that could have uh, had more thought i guess but some people in the comments were saying that it if you're going to go it. with artsy if you're going to go with um experimentation then your actors need to be on point but i also understand that because it's in the perspective of the killer you don't need good actors you don't because it's they're not really focused on the dialogue scenes. They're not yeah, focused on can, character you development. You can still craft good characters in those scenes where he's observing and listening, and and you can still even in a short amount of time. It's like we always say: some of the best characters in horror films are like the comic relief that get killed off early on, or people that get killed off early yeah. on. You, it does not take you long to invest someone in a character. No, you could do it in two minutes. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right, and I, I guess that's down to the writing and the acting. I guess, but yeah, but I also get that when you're creating a B movie, that's already going to be massively expensive. Like you can't afford the you best can't. quality of actors, can no, you? No, you can't. You can't, and that's why. I, and that's why I didn't really fo- fixate on the um, the actors and mm. the bad acting because no good, no slasher is good acting, except for maybe. Halloween. I I don't know. There's a difference between a good actor and a believable character. Like you don't have to have an Oscar-winning performance in a film to be in, to to believe the character. True, true, true. Um, sometimes when you watch something, you know that someone's acting. And is that down to the writing, or is it down to them? And maybe, maybe it's down to the director not getting the acting out of the actor as well, or yeah. the performance that they need. They but. should Stanley Kubrick their actors and just torture them. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> but yeah yeah it's all right it was an all right time i'm glad we w- went to see it yeah no it was definitely. a homage 
There's some good bits about it, but it's interesting. It was an interesting film, but um, we also went to the cinema to see, and we <laughs> mentioned this in the last podcast. Yeah, we did. And this is where I'm going to get get energized again because <laughs> A Quiet Place, day one. I was going into that film. We went to see it. We mentioned it in the last podcast, didn't we? Oh, I was excited to watch it. You were, and I tried to, I tried to give you a level head. Yeah. And we like, draw back yeah. your expectations just slightly. Um, but... But still, did it surpass or match your expectations? Um, or was it not as good as your expectations? It surpassed them in certain ways, and um, I was also kind of disappointed in others. Okay, interesting. Yeah, this was. I actually found it a difficult watch because uh, of the concept of the main character. Spoiler alert, played by Lupita Nyong'o. Yeah. And her, like, she has this, like, constant feeling of, well, thought, constant thoughts of death, her own death, because she's dying, right? She's mm-hmm. got cancer as a character. Yeah. Well, we think we do. We don't, we don't know actually what she's got. I don't think it's... I think it, it is she, cancer. Did she reveal it at the yeah, end? I can't remember if she cancer. did or not. But, but, um, it's not really a spoiler either. No. You, you, get, you know it within the first 10 minutes of yeah, the film. Yeah, and um, I, I just as a concept, it was quite, it was quite... Obviously, it's going to be emotional, that, but it was also sombre. It's the morbid. Sombre. Melancholy and morbid. melancholy and sombre, I think, is the right word, especially when she's going around New York at the start of the film. And it's, and it, I, I'm glad it took that opportunity to do that because you don't get a lot of horror films, I don't think, that embrace melancholy. I think they embrace kind of fear, don't they? And there is a lot of fear and tension in this film. But I just think it added another layer of another layer to the story and to the characters because everybody is facing their death in this apocalyptic monster invasion. Yet to her, she's already dead. So it, yeah. it's a new kind of character. I thought that was the, that changed the dynamic of the film a bit. One hundred percent. I I I haven't actually care, see, she, yeah. I haven't. I her, and I haven't seen to. that in another film before. And I loved that that perspective yeah Um, i thought she did a great job but other horror films as well they don't really embrace the emotional side to their concept they like you said they embrace the fear and the scares and sometimes that like with in a violent nature with the acting it can come across as quite comedic yeah um And and don't get me wrong i liked the moments with the monsters in this where they did appear but the moments of quiet mm-hmm. in between were so emotional mm. and like raw. Yeah. I thought they were so well done. There's a scene where Lupita Nyong'o and uh, what's his name? Um, is it Chris? No, no. He plays the, the, the man. He's been just been, he's just um, images have just been released of gladiator two, where he's playing the emperor. Yeah. We'll get looks, onto that. We'll and get he onto looks that. nuts. Um, uh, um, and he's playing the Human Torch. I want to say Evan Peters, but uh, Joseph Quinn. Bit. Yeah, Joseph Quinn. <clears throat> he absolutely shined as well. I thought his performance was, he was great. brilliant. Like, there's a scene where they are together in a Her New apartment. York apartment, and there's a storm going on outside, and it, the performances are just great. Yeah, absolutely. And not only that, the score. Yeah. Really married well with their performances yeah it really brought a tear to my eye that scene gave me goosebumps yeah i haven't had a film give me goosebumps multiple times by the way throughout the film i haven't had a film give me goosebumps in a while yeah and when that when 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 this film uh, i mean that's a few moments when they were in the the pub and they were eating pizza yeah just just moments and that surpassed my expectations i went into this film thinking we're gonna get a, a loud um a disaster movie and we we got an emotional one and it surpassed my expectations were, in that sense and i was wondering how they were going to do it in new york with the monsters how they have them going up skyscrapers and buildings and all sorts mm. of different things like that but it's really welsh yeah the special effects in it are really yeah fantastic. they're really good like I know we always like to talk about practical effects and there are good practical effects in the film, obviously for the aliens, but some of the CGI work is some of the the best I've seen in, in a good while. Yeah, I think um, normally in horror films, when you see the monster, the tension's gone. But with these types of creatures in this world, yeah. 
That's just not the case. It's because they're just they are so alien. It's because they look they're so, so brutish, they're otherish. Like yeah. they, they move with limbs that are like contorted and long, and they. But look they're like loud different. and they're strong. They're yeah. like gorillas, aren't they? Yeah, but also menacing. They're not mammals or reptiles. You don't know no. what they are. They're alien. They're like, just so menacing and brutish. And one of the things I liked is that they added very subtly to like the law of these creatures mm. there was something about the kind of growth process or eggs or, or food or eggs and you don't know what it is which is great because it leaves that and i hope we don't get it fleshed out for us yeah the I, fact I, that they come on asteroids i think is but is that scene weird and uncanny that scene in particular felt like it was just tacked on i don't i don't think in the middle of it like what, maybe, there, there was no real blending within that scene but it all that, that was but because I, of the cat he was but, trying to rescue but the cat, i'm wondering it? whether that was tacked on because they have an idea for part three to, to explore that. Element. Maybe I, I say, I don't want, I don't want to know too much about the creatures, but I do want to progress in this world and see what happens mm. uh, because they did in a quiet place, part two and one find out a way to, ways to kill these things and stop these things. Yeah. But because it happens so fast, like it's great to see how they so quickly descend into chaos. Yeah. But for for me, the, the the thing that disappointed me slightly was, um, and Jeremy Johns actually uh, in his review touches on this, is that when the chaos starts, she's knocked out and it's quickly like, oh, everyone knows to be quiet. Instantly. It reminded me of a um, of Game of Thrones season two where Tyrion gets knocked out and the whole battle happens and you don't see it. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and that's what I wanted to go into this film seeing. I wanted to see the absolute chaos. Yeah. And we did get it. We did get it. Uh, uh, like eventually when I, every, all I, the people started I, moving through the I street. I think that was kind of explained afterwards by having the helicopters with the with the speakers. They've clearly been telling people. Yeah, no, no. No, I, I, I understand that. But it's just that we missed a whole you know a, an epic sequence mm. we missed it but i i do i we did get it in the end with the uh, with the uh, the people walking in the street and everything getting louder me and you turned to each other oh. like oh the footsteps oh they're, too loud, they're too loud when they're too loud when it all turned out it turned out it was like a big horde of people oh my god yeah and when they first all the creatures first ran past as well we looked at each other we were like Holy oh my shit. god <laughs> i think it was a great film i it, mean it evoked reactions out of us yeah and <coughs> obviously since starting this podcast it was like oh we don't want to be yeah. reacting but, I think if we react <laughs> but to, it if made we, us if react. we react to a quiet place day one on the channel i wouldn't have been as emotively or emotionally involved with the characters and that's no. what it was the first time i've been to the cinema in ages mm. and i just felt emotional watching yeah. the film yeah. different all different sorts of emotions fear tension um sadness joy I, I i that's what it was about for no. me it was that was go we got the we've got stacks we got nachos we got pick and mix <laughs> it was the cinema experience it man. was it, it was, was great <laughs> and and i don't and i just want to call out chris stuckman for a second obviously he'll never see this video oh or, or, did he not enjoy did he not enjoy the film no no he, he did enjoy it but he mentioned something that i just disagree with um he mentioned that he wasn't as emotionally invested in this movie or the characters because because the first couple of films is centered around a family and it's easy to get grow, grow an attachment to this family because then you know the nurturing of the kids and the newborn and the wife and the father and the mother it's easy to to be <coughs> emotionally invested in those characters because of their relationship one, with one another and in this new movie he you didn't have that, but I did. I, I completely yes, disagree with yes, that. You, you, yes, you you don't have that relationship dynamic. But what's more powerful is the fact two strangers yeah. meet and, that's, and grow a relationship. And that's what drew them together. It was loneliness. Yeah, her because of family. Yeah, and actually, spoiler again, spoilers. I think we've mentioned that already. But when at the end of this film, she looks at that photograph of her and her father. Yeah. Oh my God, that yeah. was the most emotionally strong part of the film. And the fact that in all this chaos, these two people find each other. And they help and she, each other. And they help each other. Selfishly. She doesn't want to be involved with him at first at all. Yeah. And there's that growth there. Yeah. You get far more investment, I think, and growth 
because a they 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 could resemble you as characters, couldn't they? The, it, a, there's, a it's it's that, such one a person that is lost in the chaos. It's he's such not, a relatable yeah, experience. She's, she's she's lost and alone because of her dying. He's lost and alone because he's not even from the country. No, exactly. And he's alone. His family are back in England, and he mentions his family. He does, yeah. And he cries for his family. Yeah, I th- I couldn't disagree more. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's such a powerful. I, and I say powerful. I emphasize the word powerful. It's such an an emotionally powerful thing to develop two strangers into, you know into uh, these two strangers that eventually care for one another because they have nothing else. Yeah. They have nothing else and they, so they, so they, yeah, so they're attracted to one another, I Man, guess. I, I, so I, 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 I disagree with Crystal. My last question for you, yeah, I do as well. My last question for you though is, did you enjoy it more than A Quiet Place 1 or 2? No, I haven't seen A Quiet Place 1 and 2 in a while. They kind of so merge into one film. They I do. Know they're called Part 1 and Part 2, but they do carry on very quickly after They do, another. they do. I, I, uh, I cannot remember one and two being so emotionally impactful. No. I remember the I remember ending of the ending of number yeah. one with obviously John Krasinski's bit of, a, bit of a slow burn. I thought there were more moments of that kind of being very quiet and yeah, being there was more. It was more tense. There. It was more tense, I guess. But for, I mean, even John Krasinski's sacrifice at the end of the first one didn't hit ha- as hard. For me, then the the storm scene in and this movie. I, mo- and I this actually one. thought the director of this film had more ideas. I know the story yeah. was written partly by John Krasinski as well, but the director, in terms of the framing of some scenes, some of the shots that he got mm. um, of the city, of the characters, yeah. of even like lighting, yeah. the storm. I just think it was a little bit more sophisticated there was a lot of um, films. there was a lot of a uh, religious subtext in this movie yeah i and think imagery. it was more about hope wasn't it yeah hope and faith perhaps yeah um but yeah i liked it more what did you think to the ending shot we won't reveal what the ending shot was but um, did you think that was off off the cuff it was a bit off beat it was a bit tonally yeah offbeat. yeah um i get well, the meaning behind it it's her defiance her final what she choice. her final choice or the final thing that she has the power to do, which yeah. I liked, but I would have just preferred the noise of it landing rather than the the actually seeing of it. Seeing because it. I think they played some like heavy heavy preferred. rock some rock music afterwards. Yeah, I they? get that. I, I, I do know. get that. That was again her defiance, wasn't it? But I think yeah. just her face we and hearing the creature, we didn't need to. Yeah, I don't know. To hear, to, yeah, yeah, I, tonally, I, tonally a bit. Weird. Tonally, it was a little bit weird but overall i thought the the, the, yeah. the movie was great and i'd probably jump to see that one before one and two part one and part two yeah um i'd, I'd love to see stories in different locations locations could you imagine how 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 screwed we'd be in this country well <laughs> well, <laughs> well um, in the countryside and the uh, chris stockman's in review London. he said he would love to see you know those people that go on, on uh, to like a a, a retreat like in in the middle of the woods, no reception, no no uh, internet, and then they come back and it's just like, what's going on? And then they just get fucking eaten because they have no yeah, idea you, what's you, going they'd on. Be dead straight away. There's a great a great character in this that I really liked, which was the nurse at the at the home at the, yeah. uh, the hospice that she mm. was at, and I was really invested in his character. Yeah. Bop, just like that. <laughs> <laughs> now this is a heavy uh, spoiler, I guess. Talk on. We, on we have already said. Already yeah, spoiler. we've said multiple times. So uh, we'll have to put that in the video as yeah, well. Yeah, definitely. It's a, it's a spoiler talk, but definitely. Uh, you did your. Did you do a review on this one? I didn't. No, oh, man. I, I, I missed it. We should have it. done one straight away. We should have done. Next time, we'll try and do a review straight away. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard to 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 get it done because there's a bit more editing involved. But I guess I guess we spoke in in depth about about it here though didn't we say so, yeah yeah no, I definitely. am excited for the third one um good segue though Joseph Quinn up and coming actor yeah got his real breakthrough in Stranger Things yeah he's already out there massively yeah he's in a- MCU he's going to be Johnny Storm yeah the Human Torch he's in a quiet place he's in a one. quiet place and he's in Gladiator 2. We got our first images and looks at Gladiator 2. It man. looks... And we spoke about this on the podcast. What are you thinking? Because it's not just Joseph Quinn. that He looks psychopathic as this emperor, by the way, with like ginger hair. 
yeah. Atlas and, the, and all decked out. I think he'll be channeling Joaquin Phoenix from the first film. Mm. But you also get a look at massive actor at the moment, also working with him in Fantastic Four. Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> why have I forgot um, his name? Uh, uh, Pe- Pedro, Pedro Pascal Pedro from Pascal, Game of Thrones it. and The Last <laughs> of Us. Um, right on the edge of my tongue. Some people are a bit oversaturated with Pesco pa- Patrel. Pata- <laughs> Pat- Patel. Pe- <laughs> Pesco Patel. <laughs> Pedro Pascal. My apologies for butchering his name. <laughs> um, I loved these images, man. And the, the biggest images that actually were of neither of them, they were of Paul Mezcal, who's playing the main Denzel Washington. Uh, he looks good as well, well yeah. Um, it looks gritty. It looks like it's going to have good action in it. Um, we don't know anything about the story, mate. So we I can't, we I can't, just, we can't think about. I'm it trying to contain anything. my excitement because, yes, like I you said, the images do look gritty. They look grainy. They look like it was f- taken f- on the set of oh, the original the film. That, not, oh yes, yeah, yeah. However, and also I think there's an. Have they released an image of somebody like walking through the wheat fields, which is very similar to yeah. the first film? That visual. Yeah. Now so, we are free. Song. So, so, so they are. They are very reminiscent of the of the aesthetic of the first film. However, they are pictures. They are not frames mm. from the shots <coughs> of the movie. Are, I, are you sure about that? The ones that I've seen look like frames of the film. Um, let me just get some up now and show you because I think these are frames of the film. That, from Vanity Fair, first look, is definitely from the film. I don't know. Well, uh, I don't the thing, know. The thing about Ridley Scott, I guess, is he makes crafts massive films. They probably film a lot of things. So I remember when The Force Awakens came out, I used to buy all the Blooming Film magazines trying to get a look yeah. at what the film would be. And so many shots and yeah. frames, even characters, never ended up in the but, film. But, so yeah, you're right. But, but, also, but also, pictures com- uh, versus video, the, the, obviously the main difference, you know, obviously is video there's movement there mm. so uh, for an image it w- it might look exactly what it looks like from the original film but <laughs> in motion it could look completely different yeah it could yeah. look dig- too digital yeah because it, it's not filmed on it's not on film he hasn't he hasn't done it on film yeah and the original was done on film the one thing i, I think believe. i'm thinking about though is that i don't know what the story is going to be I, I, I'm, I'm pretty positive that it's just going to be a very similar to the original film. Like there's somebody that gets forced to be a gladiator and they fight their way off. Well, yeah, because I think you mentioned in the last uh, couple of episodes that it follows his son. I but don't every, know. But everyone's everyone like, no, yeah, well, I so don't know where you got, I that, got from. that wrong. Yeah, apologies. Because he got doesn't have a son. Is it? Is it? A, is it a, the son of someone he loves then? It's the. It's a the. Woman, um, the it's the emperor's oh, yeah. nephew. Maybe it is the emperor's nephew then. Mm. Maybe, so maybe it's not his son, but mm. you know he was. It is that in that vein of somebody carrying on like a yeah. legacy sequel kind of vein. I just wish they wouldn't call it Gladiator Two. Yeah, I've heard I've heard oh, people uh, complain about I this. I wish it, they'd call it like I know it's like in the Roman numerals, but I wish they'd call it like a subtitle. Well, you just call or it even call it Gladiators. Like, no, nah, I, I don't like that either. No, it's like when they it's better call than uh, Twisters. I ha- uh, yeah, but Twister, I, Twisters, but I Gladiators. Hate, but I hate I, I, when it's like Gladiator, yeah. Rise of the yeah, Gladiator. Name it with shit. AI. It's just no, shit. I just think just, call it something different. Just call it Gladiator. No, not even Gladiator. Just call it something different. Like m- name it something new. Or like Patel. <laughs> <laughs> Patel. <laughs> oh man. Um, what like Colosseum? Mate, I'm I'm excited. But last time I was excited for Ridley Scott, Napoleon let me down. So I never went to see it because I knew um, it was going to let me down. I don't know. There was some. There was some good qualities. He films battle scenes very well, I think. Yeah, but action. The thing, I, it was actually Joaquin Phoenix that I thought was a bit disappointing. Do you think those film. images uh, offer up too much information? I mean, that picture that you just showed nah. me, Pedro Pascal looks in trouble there. So I already automatically thinking, yeah, oh, he's going to die. You're going to watch the trailer anyway, and how much is revealed in trailers? Do you know what I mean? Not nobody's death. But that I don't think he's going to die there. He's not going to get his eyes s- s- he's, crushed out he's like in just Game of been, Thrones. He's just been de-armed, Tom. You murdered her! It was his Game of Thrones. Remember when he got his Oh, eyes? yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like, yeah, no, I'm excited. I am excited for it. And um, Paul Mezcal was, is an up-and-coming actor as well, isn't he? 
but I don't know what I can't remember what he was in. No. Oh, what was it called? I can't remember. Is Denzel Washington the emperor in this? No. He, he looks like the he's emperor is Joseph Quinn. I think he's going to be like right. Um, I think he's going to be like a aristocratic part of the elite that that I think he's going to play the part of that character. I can't remember his name in Gladiator that schools the gladiators. Oh, really? Yeah. The, um, the the actor that died during the film. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um. Some, something along just, those lines. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. But he's a great actor. Yeah. So. Yeah, I wonder what era this is in. To say the height of Rome, I think. When is it? Do you think it's going to be the height of Rome? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Um. But we'll see. Yeah. Okay. It's going to be an interesting one. Another bit of news. Yeah. In film news that I'm quite excited by is that they finally set a date. For next year, for beginning to film the Highlander reboot with Henry Cavill, with Henry Cavill, and it's being directed uh, by obviously he's playing that main character that Christopher Lambert played in the first one, the actual Highlander. Which, by the way, I think is a per- the perfect casting. Yeah, I mean, after after seeing Witcher, I was so disappointed when he dropped out of the Witcher to play Superman again. And then, and then never did, did. Then didn't get cast as <laughs> Superman again. Um, but this is being directed by Chad Stahelski, who did the John Wick films. Interesting. So he's thinking. He's he made a comment about swapping guns for swords, and I think that's going to be because sick. he was a fight choreographer yeah. and stuntman. So thinking about the Highlander sword fights that we got. I think one of our comments when we reacted to Highlander was we wanted more of those fights yeah. to get the, and I think that is going to be really cool now. 100%. Like that that's the yeah, action that's, it might be a great it might be a classic action film. I think I think it could be. It has the potential. It has the potential and because his, because and like you fighting, said like on. you said when we watched Highlander like we haven't had those types of movies before. Like n- not no, before like um, in a long time. We don't really get apart from John Wick. We don't really get quality action films no no i mean like ones that involve sword fighting yeah oh yeah, yeah that's yeah. what like you the mentioned old school, the old school in sword fights yeah, yeah i love them I and love we're them gonna get kid. gladiator like, and highlander because when you have a sword fight you have two opponents that are very close and you have a longer time usually they last longer don't they yeah so there's more emotion classic clashing that's what makes that fight in the empire strikes back at the end so effective yeah. because you have the protagonist and the antagonist coming together and they're, more personal. they're sparring aren't they it's they're talking as well as they're fighting in uh in the in the uh in the words of joker knives they're just they're more, more personal <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> great, no, that's not the, that's not what he says it's not it's not, it's not it's even it's from the film it's <laughs> not even what he says it, it's he, so, says he can savor the pain yeah or something like that doesn't he yeah yeah yeah, I, I think, um, so I'm really excited for that film. And if he's going to have that kind of long hair again, like The Witcher, yeah. like the Highlander does, um, it could be really uh, good. I wonder who's going to play, though, if they do an outright remake, mm. who's going to play that Sean Connery character that's his mentor, that's one of the other immortals. Oh, yeah. And who's going to play the villain as well? That would be the, Because it has to be an old fellow, wouldn't it? It would probably have to be an old person to balance it out, but you need a kind of established actor i think i think it needs to be role. i think it needs to be who would you cast as that in that um, role if you could it needs to be let me just i'm terrible with names by the way maybe you perhaps a uh, scottish actor as well because it's going to be set in scotland isn't it yeah um i think you should get um michael kane <laughs> <laughs> He's a hundred years old apologies to michael kane he's not 100 he's pro- i think he's 90 but yeah but <laughs> with his, with his or Cockney accent. Warwick Davis. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking more like Sean Bean or something. Sean Bean. Someone that's been in in films that way they have that kind of sword fight. He's too. He's he's, he's got his northern accent, Yorkshire accent. Yeah, really but he's new. too. He still looks young. He doesn't look old. He no, wasn't no, a Sean no, Connery. If you've seen him recently, I don't think he does. No, no. But mm. um, what would it be? Who could you cast? Let us know, guys. Yeah, comment. We need a, someone like a veteran seasoned actor. Yeah. But um, what about you? You seen any film news that you're excited about this week? No, not this week, I guess. No, I'm I don't just. Think there's been too much. There hasn't been too much, there hasn't been too much uh, on them. Um, but I was about to get into some uh, fan questions. Oh, go on then. Yeah, I like a good fan mail. I put a. I put a. Um, 
you've you put it out on YouTube. I put it out on Twitter, so I got some questions on. Twitter okay, as well. awesome. Um, so thanks, guys, if you've submitted a question for Cinema Rules fan mail. Yeah, the um the first question I guess is when can we expect an OnlyFans? Cinema Rules nudes. Oh, yeah, the amount of times we've had that question over the years. <laughs> I think we just need to give in. Bite the bullet and do it. Let's do it. <laughs> Bite something. <laughs> Um, let me just have a look quickly. Uh, What's what, your, oh, go on. what are your thoughts on the future of cinema? Um, I'm very worried by it actually because I'm not. You're not. Nope. I think one the one thing that that I, I'll tell you why I'm worried. I think we've still we're still in that zone at the moment of of big studio movies only tending not really taking risks and investing heavily in sequels and franchises mm. right so everything needs to be a shared universe or it needs to be there needs to be lots of films one one franchise recently that i got really disheartened with was jurassic world and how they took that don't from, get me started they took that from on Steve, jurassic world they took that from, i haven't even seen i haven't even seen dominion i i, I have it. i, I was, have i still was thinking about i still was excited a bit because it brought back sam neill who i love like that's the reason why i think Jurassic Park 3 is watchable because he's in it. Hang on a minute. Jurassic Park 3 is, not, is, is a good film, even without... Yeah, it's... it's it, I Everyone mean, it's shits on about. it, but it's actually quite... It's yeah. better than all the fucking Jurassic think, Worlds put together. Do you think together. it's better than The Lost World? No, The Lost World is really underrated. Yeah, yeah. Everyone thinks that's the worst one, but it's not. No, uh, for, for me, Fallen Kingdom was the worst one. But no. I haven't seen Dominion. Dominion, mate. Is it that Dominion bad? is basically Fast and Furious with fucking dinosaurs. And I swear <laughs> to God, I love Jurassic Park, the original. I love we, Steven Spielberg's remember? sequel, The Lost World. Do you remember? And I love the, the, the third one in, in the installment. They all look gritty. They're all, you know... They're horror so, films, they're really, they? It's a horror survival. Jurassic World, the, the first one, was bearable okay yeah, it was all right it, 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 very, it very much did what it relied what on this nostalgia it very much it. did what a lot of uh, legacy sequels yeah. do right they yeah. try and they, they try and go back and uh, I no i i 100 but, but jurassic world the the entire trilogy has almost ruined my experience and my my um my opinion on just jurassic park in general it hasn't but it very nearly has. They 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 tainted because Jurassic Park for it. you is one of your all time favorite trilogy. Favorite. Well, not trilogies, well, but like franchi like franchises. Like the Spielberg original. The original, like, kid, yeah. No, like, the original, it. yeah. But as a kid, I loved dinosaurs. Yeah. So all of those movies, yeah. I hold dear but to my heart. But then I have, I I do listen to, um, I've I've heard kids talk about Jurassic World as they absolutely love it. That's so, because they're morons. Yeah, but because like, they're kids it, it, and they it, don't know it, what they're talking it's about. It's like when George Lucas came out and said that <laughs> Star Wars was always for kids. Maybe Jurassic Park was as well. No. No. <laughs> the the, the, the original question? Jurassic Park was, was not made for kids. What was the question? Sorry. Um, <laughs> um, what? I was getting too heated on that. Oh, my Stop state it. of films. Yeah, so I bought Jurassic World because the state of cinema today. I bought <clears> Jurassic World because I think that that's the problem with Hollywood at the moment. Um, and also, I have a big fear about AI, just in general, just in my life. I'm afraid of AI. So there's... Um, <laughs> so I think there are some students, pra students studios practicing already, mm. dipping their little fingers in the water in, can AI write a film for us? Not can even that Can AI time. produce the actual Imagery. film itself? Yeah, there's, there's, an, there's an AI software called... terrifies me. There's an AI software called Solar. Mm. And it's producing. You go online and you'll type. You'll type in a um, a prompt saying uh, "Labradors in the snow," and it will mm. produce a video that literally looks real, Tom. Yeah. Um, and it's all me. yeah. It's it all AI. Me. That is not what film is about. Film is like music. It's like art, <laughs> as in physical art, like painting and drawing. It mm -hmm. is an art form. Mm -hmm. And if you really, if you take the human out, yeah. it's messed up, man. There's no soul. Yeah, there will no be soul no soul. To it. There's no emotion. I mean, and I know there's this. There was this thing the other month, or it might have even been last year, where a a photograph won a uh, world yeah. photograph com uh, competition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it looked great, but it looked a bit uncanny. And the guy actually <laughs> made it with AI. Yeah. And he said uh, he took him five minutes he, just to see if what would happen in the competition. And yeah. I think. <coughs> Maybe maybe we can't distinguish. Maybe maybe 
maybe there will be a well, maybe there will come a time where we can't distinguish and the soul will be ripped out of it and it will just be it will just be algorithms and artificial intelligence farming our pockets and brains for what we think we find entertaining <laughs> and we'll all just be sitting there <laughs> watching fast and furious 16 where which has crossed over with jurassic park yeah and we're just like like, like brain dead fat people in wally -E, like brain dead <laughs> eating like popcorn being like shoved into our faces with a tube sorry that's my thought but the only reason why I, i'm a bit a bit kind of positive as well is because we are getting up and coming directors mm. like Robert Eggers and Denise Alvarez, Denis Villeneuve, who is great. Nolan is still out there as a giant. So I do think Oppenheimer and Barbie probably proved that we can push art mm. back into the mainstream. Mm. Yeah. I've spoken too much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my, my opinions on the future is I'm not worried about it. Why? Because about AI? because I'm um, no not just AI the, the the future of cinema yeah but I'm not I'm not worried about it because <coughs> even if we get AI I think that that will turn into its own thing mm. I think that will be get that will uh, eventually separate into its own entertainment sec there uh, a, corner there was a term I heard the other day used for the first time and it was called instead of photography mm. because cinema is still photography isn't it yeah <coughs> they called it promptography right so yeah you funnel the prompts into the ai yeah yeah, yeah. And craft whatever you want from it but uh, yeah well so there you go it will, it, it, it will separate it will become its own thing and even if that that becomes the the new the ma new mainstream cinemas will never go away ever they will never die you, there will always be a cinema Really it won't be like a blockbuster where they'll just fade out and nobody will have them anymore. There will always be cinemas. And Do you e really even e even if there, there's less of them, yeah. that for me is a bonus I've because because it will be a more of a, a it will be a better experience it'll be a more personalized experience Maybe. and if no hardly anyone goes to it, I don't care because I like going to the cinema well, on my we own did and say experience we the cinema years ago we were like, oh, we wish they'd release older films more. And they have started doing that. Yeah, yeah. To keep up with a lack of demand, I guess. But there is more of an experience. There'll always now. be a cinema. There'll always be cinema. Uh, okay, right. Next question. That was a long answer. Um, let me get a question up here. Where did I plumbing put it? Um, I think... Here we are. Bear with me a second. Have you got another question? Who would you most like? Who would you? Uh, who would you most and least like to be stalked by out of the five <laughs> core five uh, slasher villains? Leatherface, Jason, Michael, Ghostface, and Freddy. I would never, ever in a million years want to be. This stalked, was by Harry Jenner, by the way. Want to be stalked by? I would never want to be stalked by Freddy Krueger because you can't. You can't sleep. There's no way out. Yeah, you true. cannot escape. True. Um, who would I most likely? Yeah, probably. I feel like I feel like I could escape Michael Myers. I feel like he's too slow, and the, he always catches people. Do I know they're coming? I don't know. If I know that, <laughs> <laughs> if I if I know they're coming, then Michael Myers. I think if with I, Leatherface, you'll know when he's if coming. I don't know they're coming, Leatherface, because you'd hear the ring. Yeah, I think I think the 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 one that is l the least gory death for you is probably Michael, because hmm. he'll just stab you, whereas Jace or strangle you. Whereas Jason will come up with some brutish yeah. kill. Leatherface will chainsaw you to death, His and Ghostface is just too quick. Yeah, and there could be multiple. And there could be faces. multiple. So, yeah, I think you're right. Michael is the most, like, I would want Michael to hunt me down and Freddy Krueger, no thanks. Here's a uh, question from Twitter, Sean. Yep. Or X. Have you, from from Have You Seen, this is the person's handle, um, what's your favourite feel-good movie? Do you have a film that you watch mm. for, for, like, relaxation or to make yourself feel good? Feel good. Mine Feel always good. used to be yeah. super bad. Yeah. Like, I just I just thought it was an easy, <laughs> fun watch that, uh, that always... See, see these types of questions where I have to think about the movie. There's so many bloody movies out there. I, c I can never really pinpoint one. But the first one that comes to mind is my favourite romantic comedy, which is About Time. Yeah. Is that feel-good, though? It's, 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 it's borderline feel-good. Yeah. 
it's got some really good life lessons in it that yeah. makes you feel good and it's there's a relatively happy ending yeah there there is somber in 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 some ways but with the message it it gives you i think it's quite it's quite nice yeah. um so yeah i think that's a kind of a feel good i and i also think feel good sometimes you feel good after a good cry <laughs> <laughs> so i think uh, a, a, a I film that makes you man. cry i, I think know. You, you 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 know you've let something out and you you feel good afterwards so i think yeah. there's that um, element to it as well i yeah. guess i have been watching a lot of rom-coms lately you know I never obviously did, but because because mm. I'm now a married man, <laughs> I uh, or have been for ages. But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I've been watching more, and there's some good ones out there. Like there, there are some good ones. We watched this one the other day. What was it called? Um, some of them are trash, but there was this one the other day. I think it was called Just Married with Aston Kutcher. Maybe uh, okay. And it was like it, it's never going to win any Oscars or anything like that. But it's a a feel good film. Is a film you just stick on. You maybe watch it once and never again, but you just mm. you, you watch it. For have, you, have you have you seen uh, Crazy Stupid Love with Steve Carell? Yeah, I have. That's and a brilliant. I, one. I, I really and like that. Ryan yeah. Gosling. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Um, let's have a look. Have we got any more out there? Yeah, this one I've got. I've got an answer to. So there's been a. This is by Reese Bradshaw. There's been a lot of <coughs> biopics being made recently about musicians, Elton John, Elvis, Freddie Mercury, yeah. uh, Whitney Houston, Bob Marley, Amy Winehouse, um, and hopefully, I think, Michael Jackson Jackson next year. Question is, what musician would you like to see a biopic about? For me, absolutely Don, Donny Hathaway. Um, his incredible music and unfortunate, unfortunate life story could be made into an impactful film. But those whose story would you two like to see on the big screen? Hmm. I would like to see uh, a guy, uh, Jimi Hendrix, maybe. I'd quite Ooh, like to see him. That would be. Good I would one. really like to see Prince because I think he was quite. Yeah. He had a lot of. I think you need to. You need a story where someone ha uh, someone has character, but a lot of things happen to them. So like, um, Freddie Mercury was a classic example of that. Alan John's a classic example of that. They're big. Yeah. They're big characters with history and, and a lot to say in, in a story you can't just say it about have it where it's just i don't know mm. ed sheeran <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah um, or, um, or like the beatles or a something a guy called a guy called bon scott who was the original singer of acdc and died early okay he was meant to be a, a, a big uh a big character yeah um now there is a Beatles film coming out next year. Oh, is there? It's not just a Beatles film coming out here, so next year, sorry. There's four. They're doing them for, for each, each person. individual person. Oh my and do you know God. who's directing every single one of them? Who? 1970s, 1917's Sam Mendes. Really? Yeah, who directed uh, Spectre and Skyfall. That's really interesting. Is there enough content there for four movies? I don't know, but apparently they're going to overlap. There will be for like characters like John Lennon. There I guess will be the Beatles. Like I bet the big, he, they are the biggest band ever. I guess he's gonna be um, he's gonna be filming it all at once and just intercutting it. Yeah, I think he I think he is doing that, and I think some of the, they'll obviously be overlap, mm. and they will come into different um, different uh, the, the same actors will obviously be in all of them. Um, I'm pretty sure they cast them as well. Um, you're just reading up on it I'm now. I'm just reading up in it now. I'm just checking it now to see if they did cast it because they're really big roles, to really big boots to fill, aren't they? Yeah. Um, you you would want nobodies though, wouldn't you, to be cast as these uh, guys? Paul Mezcal, who that Gladiator Two one that we mentioned, yeah, that actor, yeah. Paul McCartney, Harris Dickinson is playing John Lennon. I think he is quite an unknown, but you kind of want if there's any any of the Beatles that you want to be. You want a, uh, you want maybe an unknown for it. Might, maybe it will be John Lennon because yeah, because I don't know. Charlie Rowe as George Harrison. Ah, I don't know this fourth name. Barry Keoghan as Ringo Starr. Barry uh, Keoghan from uh, Saltburn. Fame. Oh, okay. Yeah. Interesting. That, that is a stacked cast, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, the supposed planned casting. So it's kind of been leaked, right. but it hasn't been confirmed yet. Um, okay. But there are other others being considered for them still as well. Yeah. Um, like Timothy Chalamet and people like that. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, uh, right. I'll be excited to see that actually because I think he's a great director. But is there a, 
four films. Mm. Can you sit through four films? Four I mean, you don't have like to that? sit through four films. You can pick your favourite. Your favourite yeah. Beatle and then just yeah. watch that one. I'm really intrigued at that, though. I like, a, I, I, I like the idea, but I don't know whether I'm going to be bothered to watch all mm. four. I think mm. if, if, if they come back come out yearly... I think he's going to get less and less interest. No, I think they're going to. I think it might be streaming. It might be Apple Plus. It makes sense too. Um, what What would your Who would your biopic? Mine name, would like, be you? someone that I've actually got on <laughs> on record here. Um, I had to think about it today. Sean, by the way, Sean's gone berserk with buying records. It's his new obsession. I s- I've stopped I very recently. Obsession. I had the obsession about a couple of years ago. I've stopped uh, recently, but I will be carrying on again. Um, so mine would be Sam Cook. So he's a, a, a famous uh, soul singer in the 50s and 60s. Um, he was involved in a lot of the civil rights movement. Nice. Uh, he was best, you know, he, he was a, a very good acquaintances with Muhammad Ali. Yeah. Ray, Ray so there's Charles. There's a lot of story there. There's a lot of interwoven I love, stories. I there. love that era of yeah. music. And especially with being wrapped up in the civil rights movement. Yeah. When I watched Alvis, Baz Luhrmann's Alvis, did you see it? No. Oh well, there's a guy, a guy called Little Richard. Yeah. Singer. I've got I've got his uh, yeah. record he, as well. He is in that film, and the person yeah. they play, they got to cast him and and play yeah. him is fantastic and yeah. awesome. And it makes you it makes you really think like, oh, I wish I saw them that in, in, in that, that, era. Era. that yeah. film. Yeah. 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 Film yeah okay. His character yeah. Or something like that. But yeah, I wish but, I saw that. But era also, I think Sam Cooke's death. Is actually he died quite young. I think he died thirty three years old. Oh, he was shot. Jeez. Um, and there's a, a lot of um, ambiguity surrounding his death as yeah. to what actually happened. I think the the original or the the police statement was it was um, it was justifiable homicide. Mm. So some that they they ruled his death and his murder, oh, so he murdered, as, just, as justifiable. But, but somebody did it, right? So someone did. It's really <coughs> controversial. They, they basically, yeah, very controversial. I think someone essentially claimed that he was uh, trying to rape them, mm. uh, but I think everyone that went to his open casket casket funeral saw that his body was bruised and beaten. Oh, I think you've told me about that before. That's horrible. which is, is, is horrible. So so there's a lot there that would be very interesting to see on the screen. I don't know what if there's a big enough audience for it, but I'd definitely be there. He's one of my favorite artists. Um yeah, that's that's a great one that is. Uh, you need something I don't mean to sound crass when I say it, but you need something that would play well with an audience as a story to yeah. get the emotional emotion in it. I don't know about this Michael Jackson one next year. It's been I, don't, I haven't even heard of it. I've so been directed by about it. It's been directed by Antoine Fuqua, I believe his name is, mm. um, and he directed. Um, he's he directed the Equalizer, Southpaw, yeah, um, Emancipation, The Magnificent Seven. So he's done a lot of kind of films about that are culturally about uh, kind of black heritage and so on. So it might be interesting with Michael Jackson's okay. biopic. That'll but the person, look at this behind the scenes photo already. So the person that's playing Michael Jackson is called Jafar Jackson and it's his actual oh it's yeah his it's his nephew yeah, yeah. no I remember he literally looks like him my Jesus Christ but they say this Michael Jackson biopic is gonna it's called Michael wow. and it's gonna go through all stages from the Jackson 5 to his death and they say they're not shying away from like the controversy. the controversy. So mm. it'll be interesting to see what they say his perspective what yeah. his family's perspective is that's, that's gonna be very interesting mm. Very interesting. Yeah. Um, shall we uh, go on to our final segment? Yeah, let's do... My, my film, film is, is better, better than your, your film. film. Can I just apologise for choosing the Simpsons movie last week, by the way? Because <laughs> I, uh, I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah, no, um, I don't know. Um, we had a suggestion on YouTube, apologies, I couldn't remember the name, um, about doing this segment, as, as this, genre, this the genre of this segment, and it's going to be today, not childhood films, Coming uh, of age, coming of age films are great. I love it. A great genre. Um, it's an interesting one, um, and I'm gonna go a little bit outside the box if you if you can with this one. Okay, interesting. Um, and I don't think it's gonna be a movie that you've seen before. Ah, that's gonna make it difficult. Yeah, for me to argue against. Do you it. know? Do you know what film you're going for? Yeah, hundred percent. Oh, I think I know what film you're going for as well. I'm not gonna say though. Okay. 
<clears throat> you are correct. It is Mrs. Doubtfire. <laughs> Mrs. Doubtfire. <laughs> um, there are so many to choose from for this genre. It's a really nice genre. I don't think we get a lot of these films anymore. Yeah. I think they were big when we were younger, but not now. All right, I've got it. Okay. I'm very interested to see what you pick. <coughs> My film's better than your film, Sean. Nope. Mine's better than yours. Right. Three, three two, two, one. one. The Fablemans. Uh, okay. The, the Goonies. Goonies. I thought you were going to pick Stand By Me. Um, I thought, ah, I thought yeah, yeah, I thought I you were going to pick that. I thought you were going to pick um, uh, The Sandlot. I was about, I was going to. Yeah, I or, was thinking about that. Or yeah. I thought you might pick Breakfast Club. Yeah, I was also cont- yeah, contemplating yeah. that as well. But the no, Goonies I picked the, versus the Fablemans. the Fablemans. Now this is um, this uh, is a recent Spielberg. Recent Spielberg. Spielberg. I yeah. haven't seen it. No, but Spielberg was heavily involved with the making of the Goonies. He didn't direct it. No, but, um, it was directed by Richard Donner of Lethal Weapon and Superman fame. Yes, so I want the li- I want you to start yeah. this, this time. This film is an absolute classic. It's trash. <laughs> he loves this film. Everybody loves The Goonies, man. Okay, this is a 1980s film. You have <coughs> an excellent, for once, I say for once because they can't get a decent child actor in a lot of things these days. Mm. You have the perfect well cast that were specifically sought out by Spielberg and Richard Donner um, to find the perfect chemistry with a group of friends. It's about a group of friends that go on an amazing adventure that is emotive and emotional. It's um, adventurous. Um, You've got excitement in it. When you are a kid watching this film, because that's what coming of age films are about, aren't they? They're about the, the, the children growing up and experiencing life lessons, but also having the time of their lives on an adventure. Um, you want to be those kids, don't you? Mm. You want to be those characters. Um, how, the how villains that you have in there are well crafted. The imagination of this kind of free Willy's treasure is great. It's everything that kids pretend to do. Like, I pretended to be these kids. It, I pretended to be <laughs> growing up and finding treasure and... and what, well, doing the truffle stuff. shuffle? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you're, you're blooming sloth, mate. It's I don't know sloth. about you. Sloth, yeah. Um, um, I think I think maybe that section of the film with sloth didn't age the best, but I still think that <laughs> it, it gives you some fantastic moral life lessons as a kid. So what, what's, the, what's, what's the coming of age? So the coming of age... It's about that kind of last adventure of childhood, isn't it? It's about the imagination. Before you grow up. Before you grow up. Mm. And it's the backdrop to this film is that the entire estate is getting kind of uh, destroyed, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's getting... Their um, childhood home. Yeah. And their childhood home is getting destroyed. And whilst you... Whilst they kind of stop that in the process they know, or the main character played by uh, Sean Austin from Lord of the Rings, he knows and he has this realisation that he's losing his friends around him. Hmm. And it's about learning to cope with that in the world. And he's got an older brother as well, hasn't he? Um, It's about them going their separate ways, but Goonies never say die. That's (laughs) their motto. And I think um, it's that last kind of hurrah or experience that they have. I mean, it's a different kind of coming of age story, but it, because it's yours is yours is autobiographical. Mm. This one is completely fiction. Yeah, but it's about capturing the imagination of childhood that I don't think exists anymore. Mm. <laughs> it's interesting. Yeah, no, definitely. I think the Fablemans is a uh, is better coming of age story than the Goonies. Um, well, it's first of all, it's a semi semi autobiographical film based on the uh, the childhood upbringing of the most famous yeah. director of all time, Steven now, Spielberg. I haven't seen it, but I have heard that as a film or as one of his films, it was it was nominated. Did it win the Oscar? No. No, it was nominated though, wasn't it? I believe um, so. But I've heard that whilst it's interesting and autobiographical, there's nothing really there that's exciting that captures 
Hang on a minute. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. On a minute. I don't know. What... <laughs> go on, go on, go. On. Um, so yeah, it's semi <laughs> semi autobiographical uh, film about the upbringing of the most famous director of all time, Steven Spielberg. Now, Tom, do you agree that film has shaped you as a person? Has shaped your personality and your interests and hobbies? Yeah, I think film does. And I think many people watching and listening could probably agree with that statement as well. You know, film in itself has shaped us as people, as humans. Mm. And it did so with Steven Spielberg as well. And it's perfectly represented in this film. It's a coming of age story. He finds his passion, his life story revolves around film. So what can be more relatable to the audience that are listening and watching now and to us than to watch Steven Spielberg, the greatest director of all time, grow up s- surrounded by this passion? Not only I'm this, just, I'm just a bit, go on. Not, not only this, but the film also talks about being, it, it really represents the fact that you're molded by your parents as well and your parents' relationships. yeah. yeah. Now, it's semi-autobiographical because the main character in this is called Sammy, not Stephen. And his mother is a very creative I was, I was, soul. I was quite I was quite curious about that. I was going to ask you about that. You might not know. If it's autobiographical, why did he not just call it... Why did he call it The Fablemans? And is he, has he actually... Is it actually... Is it, it, he actually, it, it, it actually is. made a lot of... No, no. No, it is. It's just... I guess it's just to, to pay respect to those areas of his life that are yeah. a little bit... Uh, yeah. too personal so mm. he doesn't want to put names mm. to these characters um well the the real names to these characters but as i was saying the his his mother is a very creative soul mm. and his father is a very technical uh, person with not much creativity at all so it's the amalgamation of the two and the, and almost the fight between the two that shapes him as a person and his mother actually goes through an affair yeah. in this movie and he finds out this through his creation of film. He actually catches yeah, this on film yeah. and that's when he realizes. And I love the fact that he's amalgamated his passion through film that has, has molded him as a person in his life and in his career. And it's interwoven with the story of his of his parents and this affair that has molded him as a person in his personal relationships so what more of a of a coming of age story do you want from this right and and i and i yes it might not be fun yes it might not be adventurous but it's real and it's and it's and it's it's relatable I, i i see that i see that you say relatable but in terms of in terms of the amount of people that can relate to a film, mm. despite this being fictional, despite it being imaginative and adventurous, mm. okay, far more people can relate to this because it's about exploring your imagination in childhood. It's about having that sense of camaraderie with friends. It's about being together. It's about opposing something that seems like it's, that, un- that uh, seem like unsurmountable odds. The Fablemans, whilst it is a an experience of, Spielberg and whilst it's autobiographical it's it's for him isn't it he's made this film for himself this is a film that's made for other people so if we're thinking about relatability and reach mm. The Goonies has reached far more people and will we be no. remembered or be has had far more of an impact on people than this film will the Goonies this might be remembered in film history the Goonies maybe no 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 no. I'm, I'm not talking about film, The I Goonies this film was generationally important no 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 no. it's, it's not necessarily generationally important the Goonies is entertaining. Yeah. That's why it's so famous because it's entertaining. The Fablemans, as a so the Fablemans com- is not entertaining. A, a, no, as a coming of age story, it's not going to be as entertaining as an adventure movie. But as a coming of age story, it is far more relatable than the Goonies. There is not one iota of the story or plot within the Goonies that the audience can relate to. Okay. No, but they can relate they can to laugh. being they can, kids. They yeah, can relate to yeah, being kids. Of course. And the actors of that course. they got to play these kids. Were but that's all. That's what, just the surface. Just the I mean, surface. Sean level. Austin, Kihei Kwan, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, who plays Thanos? Um, he plays the older brother as well, yeah, doesn't he? Yeah. Like, yeah. The chemistry between them is fantastic. The dialogue is really well written. Yeah, but I other than that, heard, other than that, uh, the yeah, surface level yeah. friendship. 
Fair I, enough. I haven't but the heard... Fablemans goes deeper than that. I it, it talks about yeah. marriage. It talks about uh, looking up to parents, being molded by your parents, being molded by your passion as well. It's not yes, it, it's not talking about friendship, but friendship isn't the only thing that should be included or considered in a coming of age story. So you have it's to a lot of more than so that. So what is the what is the thing that uh, what are you saying then? He learns about how to to be married, or he learns about marriage. He learns about he he learns how to um, balance his passion with his family because his passion is the single most he important a- thing. He didn't actually learn that, though, because he had an affair himself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, there you uh, go, there uh, you go. Sorry, Spielberg. But the fact, but I the, know you're watching. But the fact that he did have an affair <laughs> shows that his parents' behaviour, his mother, moulded him quite well, uh, well yeah, in, in, that, yeah. in that way. I, I just think, you know, you c- it's difficult. This is a, this is is These are two very different films, aren't they? They are. But if you take it at entertainment value... And, and learning about friendship and joy and perseverance, I think this film is uh, is very impactful and it does show, and it is a film about growing up um, because we all have to grow up, Sean. And this takes you through the eras. It takes him from a, from a small child to a young adult getting his first I, job. I'm going to find that on the podcast the other day, we were talking about Spielberg's new film and about how he's going to do, go on that alien. Mm. And you said that his recent films yeah, have I, not been impactful. Yeah. They've not been as good or yeah. even well crafted. But this, you said that but this film you said is that his craft it, of film. This film not was, not was a good. shining light within that, within that pile of shite. <laughs> I, so you're I, calling I say, him I a shit say, director? No, I'm not. I'm, that, that's obviously an over exaggeration. But <laughs> this film was almost, and people agree. Everyone listening and everyone watching, and all the reviews say that this film yeah. was a good comeback from this, Steven Spielberg. Um, the Goonies was so is, was so popular. I'm actually shocked that they didn't or haven't tried to make a sequel to it. Yeah, I mean, the, I the sequel's they, been they, in the works for like ten years. Yeah, I don't think they will, and I'm glad they they don't because. I think of, they if will you have them come back, if you have them come back as adults, adults, <laughs> adults, and do the same, and do the same kind of adventure, I don't think you'd capture the same magic because it's about being kids, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, I think you you have to have a group of kids together in a in an effective growing up film because they all have their different experiences about what it's like mm. to grow up, and we all. We all we all get to that age or stage, don't we, where we lose our innocence or lose that sense of innocence, and that's completely what this captures. The sense. When of do innocence. you? When do they lose their innocence in this? No, but it, it, this this film it's about capturing it one last time, isn't it? It's no. about if you could bottle the essence of childhood mm. Mm. and joy and friendship. Mm. That's what the film is. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and it is. It is a little bit. Cartoony so, it's, so it's almost the sometimes. opposite to coming of age because it's it's. It's trying to latch on to that. I think it's one last hurrah before mm. you lose that sense of innocence, isn't it? But they never lose that sense of innocence in the end of the film. So yeah, but the, did they but, ever, but, ever come of but age? I think <laughs> you, you, the audience knows that they... They, 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 they will last, eventually, yeah, in the sequel. It's their last one. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, no, I, I, they are completely different movies. I think you could argue <laughs> to the ends of the earth because they are so different uh, in their approach. Do you think The Goonies is a better film? Um, again, that, 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 that question is so weird when comparing it to the Fablemans because they are completely different movies. Yeah. yeah. Yes. They're coming of age movies, yeah. both of them, but they're done and tackled in such a weird way. <laughs> the, the, the Fablemans is done uh, through, uh, you know, um, it centers more around story, whereas the Goonies is more spectacle. Yeah. yeah. Let us know what you think, guys. Do you prefer the Goonies or the Fablemans or do you have another... Um, growing of age. Oh, God, I coming can't of age. Coming, coming of age. Coming, coming of, of age. age. Do you have another coming of age or growing uh, of age? Coming of age story. I almost picked the Breakfast Club, but the thing that annoys me about the Breakfast Club is that she's kind of. Do you know the main girl that comes out at the end and she's got like her makeup and hair done? Yes. Yeah, I'm too, like, it's, it's like not. It's not teaching you a moral lesson of. <laughs> 
be yourself. It's like conform to society's expectations of you. Do <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. a little bit. Do a, a bit of an Yeah, extent. don't be yourself. <laughs> do this and you'll get the guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, right. Oh, we've been going on. That's a, it's been a long podcast. It's been uh, an hour and 20 minutes. Yeah. Um, so thank you for listening. Um, Thanks for the questions as well, guys. Yeah, if you've got any questions, drop them on this video. Yeah, make sure you uh, like and subscribe on YouTube. Make sure you follow and download all the the podcasts, uh, past podcasts and future podcast episodes on Spotify, on Apple Podcasts. Yeah. You know, go on to our Patreon page, link in the description below, where we'll be uh, posting exclusive content on there very soon and early access to our podcast. Um, but other than that, thank you for listening and we'll see we'll you see next, next time. time.